The problem with talking about one of the most iconic films of all time is that there is almost nothing that I could possibly say that someone else hasn't already said. By extension, Bela Lugosi's name has nearly become synonymous with the character of Count Dracula. Todd Browning's adaptation of the stage play, based on the Bram Stoker novel, was released in 1931, right around the time when sound movies were starting to catch on. In addition to being somewhat of a pioneer in that field, the film also started the series of universal monster movies that would follow. The film revolves around the title character, who has gained a monstrous reputation outside his castle. Coming to Carfax in London, Dracula is soon taken with affection for a woman named Mina, which prompts concern from her fiancé, Jonathan Harker. After Mina's friend Lucy tragically dies one day of an illness, they enlist the help of Professor Van Helsing, who reveals that Dracula is really a vampire imbued with a plethora of supernatural powers. The protagonists must work together to save Mina and defeat this satanic being. What can you say about Bela Lugosi? His portrayal of the Count is one that has been imitated and spoofed countless times. It still holds up fairly well. There are some who would consider it to be a little over the top by today's standards, but you have to take a few things into account. First, Lugosi was a stage actor, which normally requires a great deal more expression and articulation than screen acting. Second, you have to consider the time in which it was made. There were different styles and standards in 1931 than there are today. In the end, Lugosi's Dracula still conveys the ominous presence and charmingly sinister demeanor that the character calls for. Also great is Dwight Fry as Renfield, a man who becomes a crazed lunatic after being enslaved by the Count. He is just so unsettling, especially in his laughter, that he more than makes up for the scenes where Dracula is absent. Edward Van Sloan plays Van Helsing, doing a good job of matching Lugosi in the cunning and intensity during their scenes together. People like Helen Chandler as Mina, David Manners as Harker, and Herbert Bunston as Dr. Seward all do fine in their respective roles, but they're just outshined by the three main players. One thing that this film invokes is that classic horror feeling that you just don't see anymore. The gothic atmosphere is prevalent throughout, especially in the castle. What's really impressive is how many horror films nowadays rely on gore for shock value when this film accomplishes its goal with barely a single drop of blood shown. It gets by on atmosphere and performances. The opening song from Swan Lake beautifully sets the eerie mood, and the fact that there's no musical score only strengthens it. A version with music has since been released, but I honestly think the original is better. There's just something to be said for the scenes that are carried by the creepy movements and the unsettling silence. It's something special about the film that adding a musical score actually takes away. There are also a few differences from the book, such as Renfield being the one who visits Dracula in the beginning instead of Harker. But the film has so much going for it that it honestly doesn't matter. Dracula has more than stood the test of time, with its creepy atmosphere, electrifying performances, and lavish production making it worthy of even more respect than when it first came out.